Okay, so in this question, we're asked to draw a sketch, right, of the VT graph, velocity time graph, for the motion of the train from A to B and B. So it's important, right, with, with this, do your graph nice and big, okay? Label your axes correctly, okay? It's important you do put velocity there, right? Don't just write V, you need to write the full word velocity, the units, meters per second. The same there, don't just write T, put time in, right? And, and the units, of course. And put zero there then, of course, to represent... Um, the origin right where we're starting from okay in terms of our time and velocity now um first thing first here it says here that um at the beginning right this train is is um traveling at a steady speed of 18 meters per second okay now um it doesn't have to be starting from rest okay when we pick up the situation okay it's just picking up this train going at 18 meters per second so um, i'm going to put 18 about there okay scale doesn't matter here right it's not about so it is about drawing a sketch, as it says. You don't have to get everything perfect. Um, but we've got, it says it's traveling at a steady speed of 18 meters per second as it passes through the point A, all right? Now, we're not going to write A anywhere on here, as such, because this isn't looking at distances and, and, and position, right? It's, it's, it's mapping the velocity against time, right? In terms of its speed, yeah, what, what, at time. So when time is zero, when we, when we first get introduced to this question, the velocity is 18 meters per second, okay? Um, and then it says 15 seconds later, it begins to slow down. So it's traveling at this speed of 18 meters per second for 15 seconds, okay? So we need to do a horizontal line, flat line, to show that it is continuing at that speed for 15 seconds. And what I tend to do is I do a broken line down here to show then that that's up until 15 seconds, okay? And then what to say, it starts um, to, um, slow down at a uniform rate for 30 seconds until its speed is 10 meters per second so 10 is going to be say roughly there isn't it okay as i said don't don't be too worried about the scale but we're trying to sort of get it in correct sort of proportions 10 would be about there i want to say for 30 seconds it, it slows it's, it's it's from 18 down to 10 um over the course of 30 seconds so in terms of distance here we might need to sort of roughly double that so it'd be about there okay and that would be taking me to my 10 one and let's, let's line this up here good so again i'll do a dotted line going broken line going across and we'll just show them what's happening to the velocity over the course of that 30 seconds of course 30 seconds then that would take me to 45 on it seconds it then um what to say then the train then increases its speed uniformly for 45 seconds until it reaches the speed of 20 meters per second. So now we're going to increase to 20. So we'd write, say, 20 about there. And it increases its speed, obviously, over a course of 45 seconds. So 45 seconds, well, we've already had 45 seconds. So we need to more or less double this. Okay, that's what we need to do, don't we? Um, so we're going to be going there, and we need to go all the way up to 20. So let's, let's have a look where 20 is. This is about there. As I said, we're going to double that time it goes from 10 all the way up to 20 and in terms of our time now another 45 seconds takes us of course to 90 seconds and that's pretty much it it gets to part of point b then when it's traveling at 20 meters per second and just for completeness sake we could dot it obviously use a dotted line right because just to show it's taking us to our values don't do a full line because this is our full line here our complete line that's describing the velocity over that time interval so we've done part A. Now part B, it says calculate the acceleration of the train just before it reaches B. So just before it reaches B, okay, here, just before it reaches B, okay, that we want the acceleration there. The good thing is the acceleration is going to be the same, of course, all the way here because it's because it's increasing its speed at a uniform rate. That line there is straight. So if we work out the acceleration there, okay, it's, it's going to be the acceleration just before B. And of course, to get the acceleration, you just need to do the gradient, okay? So acceleration, don't forget, is the gradient. And to get the gradient, of course, it's the rise, isn't it? Divide by the step. Um, so if I do a little triangle here, okay? Again, just use dotted lines, okay? The triangle here will be, um, we work out that uh, step there, so that's 45, isn't it? Okay, a change in time. And we can work out that there, which is going to be our change in velocity. So what's the change in velocity? 
is that 10? So it's going from 10 to 20. So acceleration, the gradient, which is the change in velocity, divided by the change in time. So the change in velocity, as I said, will be 20 take away 10, which is 10, divided by the time, which is 45. So you work that out, okay? Then you get, um, of course, our answer, which is 0 0.2. We'll go for two decimal places. It's 0 0.2 recurring, but we'll do two decimal places, 0 0.22, okay? Meters per second squared, all right? So we've, we've done that there. Part B then says find the distance from A to B. So to get the distance from A to B, we need to get, if you remember, okay, um, we need to work out the area, okay? So the distance covered is the area under the graph, right? Now, it's up to you how you'd want to go about this. I would be tempted to split these into, say, three shapes, right? So I've got um, this shape here. Let me use a purple pen so I can highlight it to you here. Okay, we've got this shape here, which is a rectangle, so we call that shape A, all right? Then we've got this shape here, which is a trapezium, okay? And then we've got this shape here, which is also a trapezium, okay? You don't have to split it that way. You could split them up into series of, of, of triangles and, and rectangles, but it is much easier in this case here. Less work to do. So area A, okay? Uh, let's have a look at this here. Area A will be this rectangle, so it would be um, the length, which is 18, times the width, which is 15, okay? So we get 270 meters. Area B, okay, now this is a trapezium where these two sides are parallel. So it would be half, okay? Um, so the formula for it is half A plus B. So these two sides added. So that side there is 18. Let me write the formula down first. Okay, so it'll be this side would be our A. That would be my B, which is 10, times the height between them, which is 30. We'll work that out. One half. 18 plus 10 times 30, and we get 420. And to get area C then. Similarly, again, it's, of course, it is a trapezium. So trapezium in this case now, let's go back to this, have a look at this. We've got, so you're looking at the big shape here, this shape here. So you've got these two sides are parallel. So that side there is 10, and then this side here is 20, okay? So it'd be 10 plus 20. Okay, that's your A and your B, and the, the height between those two there is 45, right? So times that by 45. You know, if you can't see the trapezium, sometimes it's best to turn it round, because we often see trapeziums like this, don't we? Yeah, you can see then these two sides are the parallel. Okay, ignoring that sort of broken line there. Um, so we get our calculator to work that out. So we got 675 meters and of course to get the final answer then the total distance you just need to add them together right so total distance are those three values we just worked out added together we get one three six five meters